Australians got the information that there was a Jap patrol coming down on the ridge towards us. So we weren't told to dig in uh, deep. I had the gun up high, and uh, we camouflaged it. You know, we stuck uh, branches in. And then they, there was an American lieutenant, because he was a sharpshooter, and he took care of Taylor and Charlie. And we waited. And the lieutenant was to my right flank, and they were coming down through, like, partway down in the valley. I think there were 12 or 13 of them. And one of them came all the way through in front of, uh, of them that were still in the jungle. He came through the open area. And he was parallel to the Australians. But they didn't fire until the lieutenant killed the uh, Taylor and Charlie. This is the last guy on there. One guy that waited until the patrol was through, and that the, the guy in the front, you know. And then I was given the order to fire, and I emptied a whole belt on the uh, 10 or 12 guys that were down the bottom. And the two cannibals who were right behind me put their hands over them. Out. They'd never heard a machine gun had no idea what it was, you know. They were real wild uh, cannibals. I was supposed to go down and go through, I didn't know yet, but I know I was supposed to go down and go through the packs, but the lieutenant did that. And then he came back, and the Australians got on the radio, and they radioed that the training ship, which took us back to Brisbane. The ship was waiting. And uh, they had uh, lifeboats that we had to climb into. And we abandoned a lot of equipment, blankets and things, that were left with the natives. Now we knew that the Japs were running patrol down that far from we were. We had no way of getting the information. There was nobody lived there. No casualties on your side at all. They never even fired a rifle. They never had a chance. So what happened was uh, we were all over that ship, and the captain, who was British, didn't like it. Uh, he felt we were cluttering up his ship, and we were too friendly with his crew. These are the crew that were training the Australian sailors. And uh, we were buying the rum ration from the sailors. So for a shilling, you could get a noggin of rum, which was, you know, a glass glass of rum. So I figured, what the hell? The captain found out about it somehow. And he got pissed off. And. Uh, so uh, there were two Marines. How funny. So I put a rope across the fan tail. The weather was nice, so we all slept on the rear end of the ship, on the flat part. And um, what happened was uh, he had two Marines marching back and forth. They'd march up one, they'd stamp their feet, you know, they turn around and they march back. These are Brit Marines. British Marines, yeah. yeah. And uh, none of the students or the sailors were supposed to communicate with us. But we had condoms that had been issued to put over the muzzles of our rifles, which we hadn't used. And somebody got the bright idea of putting a shilling in a condom, tying a string on it, you know, from the fish line kits, lowering it down to the uh, porthole where a sailor would take it in, take out the shilling, pour his noggin of rum in, tie the knot, and send it up again. <laughs> so everybody wanted in because they wanted the shillings. You know, a shilling would buy like, uh, like four uh, uh, mugs of beer. You know, and they never, the captain never found out about that. 
So we were a bunch of happy uh, campers until we got to Brisbane. How long were you on that sand sail for? I think four days or something, three days. We got to Brisbane. We had to go through the whole damn routine again. Dental inspection, uh, what do you call it? Uh, short arm inspection. Then we were loaded on a uh, LSI, I think it's called. It's a long, narrow, flat bottom ship with ramps that go down. And the infantry goes off on the ramp. It's landing ship infantry, I think it's called. And we were taken to the 41st Division uh, base camp. And there again, we were uh, checked out. Uh, no short arm inspection this time. And then uh, we went on a hike with weapons and a machine gun. And then we found that we had to have the guys from the rifle company help us with the ammunition. The machine was heavy. And there we got on the landing craft, and we went along the coast. Uh, at night, and uh, in the morning we turned in, and we went in, and there was opposition. The Japs had a uh, couple of machine guns and uh, mortars and a uh, 20 millimeter and a tank gun, and one of the anti-tank uh, shells went through the front of our boat. It was armor armor-piercing uh, yeah. bullet and it went through the neck of the uh, lieutenant, almost tore his head off, and he was bleeding up in the air, spraying all over all of us, making us nervous as hell. And uh, whoever was on the beach behind that little gun uh, kept shooting at us. And when we landed, uh, another uh, landing craft that had landed before us had uh, taken him out. But I saw the gun there with the, with the clip in it and the, uh, and the dead jabs, and we dug in. And I took the Lieutenant uh, Thompson and uh, his uh, web belt. And, uh, so that was your, your first opposed landing? That was our first opposed landing. And by the time we were really set up, there was an airfield there, some mm -hmm. kind of an airfield. Uh, We just stayed on the beach and uh, spread out, and then we made a big half circle, and the CBs came in where we had landed. And they put up Quonset huts and brought in machinery. I think they were going to, uh, I know they were going to enlarge the airfield, see, which was up on the high ground. Yeah, we just kept making uh, weird landings. I think the next two were unopposed, and then the, uh, the landing we made at Hollandia. Uh, we got into the town, and uh, I set up the machine gun in what used to be the uh, bank, made you know, with coral blocks, and uh, the top of it all been blown away. Because by then we had uh, ships uh, shelling before we landed. Is that where you uh, blew the safe? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was an old Krupp safe, the old kind. And I was bored shitless, you know, because uh, nothing was happening. So I got a Jap helmet and uh, four concussion grenades. And I... Uh, I hung the... Uh, helmet, I shortened the chin strap on it, and I hung it right over the, uh, the tumblers of the safe. Put the uh, four con uh, three concussion grenades in, pulled the pin on all three of, pin or three of them, and jumped back over the wall. Everybody was already over the wall. And when it went off, what happened? was it blew the tumblers out and uh, almost flattened the helmet, which I thought was funny too. And uh, what did I do then? Oh yeah, 
I couldn't open the safe because what happened is the, uh, it seems that one of the, uh, the rods that's put into the hole in the bottom had, was still stuck in the bottom. The upper one had come out almost all the way. But luckily, uh, we had a couple of Jap bandits laying around, and uh, by levering the, uh, the upper one, the lower one lifted and I could open the safe. And we found all kinds of things in there. And not much, there was a whole bag full of Japanese aluminum coins, and there were, uh, there were bundles of uh, Japanese invasion money. I used them to trade with. Yeah, for food. food, for anything. And uh, then we started uh, going on patrols. Oh, God. See, I didn't realize Hollandia was a big Japanese base. And uh, we had even landed uh, paratroopers on the airfield. I mean, the only parachute to jump in uh, New Guinea. And that's when uh, we were fighting for that damn airfield. And they sent a patrol into the swamp. And I got into trouble there. We were supposed to go through the swamp and go up on top and guard the edge of the airfield. But the Japs were dug in. And uh, I'd lost the machine gun tripod. I mean, you know, the, the, every time the tide went up, the water in the swamp got higher. How many of you went in there? About a platoon, I'd say about 50. And I know 11 came out. Well, that I know. Right. See, more may have drifted into the side because right. we were being shot at from all directions. And you know, your imp in instinct when you're being shot at is to get down. I think that's where I picked up the uh, amoebic dysentery, Asiatic amoebic uh, dysentery. Because there were pieces of dead Jap floating all over that damn swamp. Those Japanese that you were fighting in New Guinea had initially been posted in Manchuria. Manchuria. But we killed them. And. Uh, we were in the damn uh, swamp for a couple of days, once in two or three days. Uh, we were called out, and I think a rifle company went in. They had already taken the top of the airfield. I think some, uh, they came down from, from the top, mm -hmm. and they have killed the Japs there. See, the leeches, you know, you get enough blood taken out of you by the damn leeches, it weakens you. And there are a lot of leeches in that damn swamp. Did you have any kind of treatment for them? Well, unfortunately, uh, yes, if uh, we could get undressed and put a cigarette, uh, and they would uh, uh, drop off. But we were crawling around and crawling over uh, brush, and uh, we were crushing them. And the, whatever they stuck into us stayed there. And that's when you would get infections and Yeah, jungle that's rot. when the jungle rot started, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, but since everybody had it and you couldn't do anything much about it, uh, you tried keeping out in the sun. I don't know about the rest of the war, but in New Guinea, the Japs had been there for two years already. And uh, they were going to build a series of airfields so they could attack Australia. And our job was to take the airfields and use them to attack the Philippines. Because that's what MacArthur's goal mm -hmm. was. He was, uh, you know, so, I shall return. So New Guinea was valuable as a staging area. Yeah, it had no other value. And the, uh, like when we were fighting in, uh, in, uh, on Bayak, it was Bayak. We were actually moving through a scrub typhus area. And uh, a lot of the guys that got scrub typhus died. 
So I think we had more casualties from disease than we did from the Japs. The malaria attacks I would get, uh, they would take my weapons away. My, uh, I'd be moved over to the side of the emplacement, and uh, somebody else would hold my Tommy gun, and uh, I'd be given a hand grenade for comfort, just so I knew I'd be armed. How long would those attacks last? Uh, three days. And I'd get chills and fever and chills mm -hmm. and fever and I'd throw up. But I'd get uh, uh, an extra half an Atterburn uh, tablet and I'd get an extra half a canteen of water because I sweated a lot. But uh, at least I was with my men and they would take care of me. You. Um spent a fair bit of time fighting alongside of some other interesting characters like Australians, Gurkhas. Well, the Australians were interesting because, see, I grew up on tea, and they were very big on tea. And uh, twice a day they would brew up. They'd build a fire. Incidentally, they were very good campers, these Australian soldiers. And that was something that you could appreciate because you were yeah, a camper I yourself. Yeah, too. So they would make practically smokeless fires, and uh, they would have a, a billy can, which is about this big, and they'd boil the water. Then they would throw in a handful of this black tea and cover it and let it sit. And it would sit for, I don't know, five minutes, and they'd take a bayonet and they'd hit the side of the can of the pot, and it would all settle to the bottom. And then they would take the bayonet and they'd run it through the bale. And it's so funny to see this big New Zealander or Australian take it and uh, take off his hat and take it, grab the bottom of the pot and say, I'll be mother. So I hung out with them so I'd get a mug of tea. Picked up some of the slang, you know, and I taught them some of my songs too. And I had a harmonica. It was something like this. This is a new one, but I had a pretty beat up one. And uh, I would play. Oh, I had a little chicken and she wouldn't lay an egg. So I poured hot water up and down her leg. Oh, the little chicken hollered and the little chicken begged. But the little chicken laid a hard-boiled egg. Yeah, silly songs like this they thought were very funny. Possum, ricky, ticky, chicky, picking right from the bin. Two, I could do, frigazy, a noose. 